All right, more Dr. Chris Q&A, here we go. This question comes from C4. C4 is just the first two letters of your email. I don't think I have the rest of your name, that's fine. With the syringe method, can syringes be reused? I noticed that they can be pricey and really add up in cost. My vet said to give my cat 125 mils daily. We are having zero luck with an eight-year-old cat who fights fluids and gets nasty, bites, has to be scruffed, and literally takes three people to tackle him and hold him down to give sub-Q fluids the traditional way. Mm. I even warm fluids and switch from an 18 gauge needle to a 20 gauge thermo needle. I can get a needle in no problem. With an 18 gauge needle, we had a hard time getting it into his thick skin, as the vet called it, so we had to switch gauges. So we had to switch gauges. Once that needle is in, he gets all nasty and hateful, and the claws come out. We've wrapped him up in a towel, covered his head with a towel, tried every method that the vet tech showed us. Short of sticking my cat four to six times, we can't seem to get fluids into him. I just don't think I can afford to buy syringes at two to three times to, uh, per day if they can't be reused. All right, C4, I'm just calling you C4, sorry. Uh, all right, my friends, listen, listen. I feel your pain. Um, you know, when I first started doing um, videos, um, I had a cat named Zachary, and Zachary was what I called a marshmallow cat because he was really easy to do lots of things with. I can give him subcutaneous fluids, he didn't care. Put a video up and people were like, you know what, that's great for your cat, but what about mine? My cat is like scratching, biting, resisting, just they don't want anything to do with subcutaneous fluids. And I was like, hmm, this makes a lot of sense. Um, because here's the thing, if you're a vet and you're working in a practice, typically a cat can come in, you can, get, you can give him or her subcutaneous fluids in the clinic, but here's the thing, they even show you how to do it there, but for a lot of cats, they are frozen in fear. A coping strategy for a cat under stress or under some sort of uh, fear or anxiety is freeze. We go very still. We do certain slow blinks. Sometimes we uh, 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 bob our head down. We try to escape the world psychologically. And so when things happen to us in a clinic setting, sometimes we just let it happen. Then you take that very same kitty, take him or her home, all hell breaks loose. Everything that you tried didn't work. You changed the needle, you changed uh, the method, uh, all sorts of stuff, and it doesn't work. It's very frustrating. Um, it's brutal because it feels like you're failing your cat. Obviously, from a person who's opted to do some therapy, some treatment for your cat, you care. You care about this stuff. Not everyone does. You do, and you're trying. And sometimes, an illness or the success of a treatment feels like it's on the line with the sub with successful treatment at home. And when you do the subcutaneous fit therapy and it doesn't work, it feels like you're failing. These are not good places to be. Let me tell you this, the cost of the syringes is the least of your problems right now. The biggest problem right now is this. Let me read it again. We are having zero luck with an eight-year-old cat who fights fluids, gets nasty, bites, has to be scruffed, and literally takes three people to, to tackle and hold him down and give him the fluids the traditional way. You have a cat that is in all possible ways saying no thank you. You have a cat who is in all possible ways saying the way that fluids, had, the way that subcutaneous fluids has been introduced in my life, I am opting out. I am telling you no. I do not want anything to do with this method. Please go back to the drawing board and think about this again. By the time that you have to introduce a scruff or a pin or more than two people, uh, that sort of thing, changing a gauge of a needle, changing even technique, even going from a bag from a syringe technique, those are all valid things to try, but it's not the fundamental problem. Why? 80% of the success of giving subcutaneous fluids happens well before that needle touches their body, okay? So there is a number of things that your cat requires to feel comfortable, to volunteer. I use that word all the time. What does volunteer mean? For medication, for subcutaneous fluids, whatever you're doing, two things. Your cat should feel like he's volunteering for whatever you're doing. And it doesn't mean it goes perfect. It doesn't mean uh, there's never any struggling involved. What it means that your cat needs to be on board. He needs to be feel, he needs to feel a part of that process. And believe it or not, believe it or not, there is a way to get there. 
I created a whole course about this called Stress to Success. And what I did is I went to different homes, different, diff different cats, filmed what it took to get certain cats to say yes instead of no. Beyond needle, beyond temperature, beyond the type of bag, beyond the type of day that you do it, beyond the room that you do it in, what you need to do is go through a systematic way to figure out what your cat says yes to and what your cat says no to. And when, and when you can do that, things can really change. Now, of course, you get that bag of subcutaneous fluids that day from the clinic and they're like, give it tomorrow, give it tonight. You have no prep time. But let me tell you, rarely, rarely is it that the success of your cat is dependent on whether or not it gets a full dose of fluids that day. What should instead happen, for most cases, for, in my experience anyways, for the, the, the pets and patients that I see, I would try to conduct things so I can account for that time that it takes to get a cat to volunteer for the fluids. What do I mean by volunteer? What's another way to, uh, of looking at this? Imagine your cat is bigger than you are. Imagine your cat is bigger than you. You got a big cat and now a small cat in the room with claws, with teeth, and he loves you or she loves you. But how are you gonna give these methods? You're gonna climb on the back, get three pe pe people to wrestle down that big cat, throw in that needle? Or are you gonna use some training techniques? Are you gonna try to see how that cat responds to what you do in order to get that cat on your side. That is highly dependent on specific individual things about you, about your cat, and about how that situation looks like in your home, okay? So it's, it's a process. In a, in a, I wish I could give you more info in a vlog like this, but it's a process, it's a learned process. You poke a cat once, you poke them twice, and that's the response, what you described, switch gears altogether. I would do this completely different. I, it's even possible for some cats to have what I call the free water method. And what that means, it's, it's an alternative to, to getting fluids. It's trying to get hydration into them different ways other than subcutaneous fluids, okay? So there's lots of ways, lots of methods to give subcutaneous fluids, but there's also a philosophy behind it. And sometimes by going through a process, you are going to learn whether subcutaneous fluids is for your cat. Do, will they say yes? Will they volunteer? Or, or is there a different method to get where you need to go for whatever their problem is, okay? There are alternatives. Uh, now what about the syringes? Let's say you did use a syringe. Syringe method, by the way, um, is a much faster way to give uh, a volume of subcutaneous fluids. It allows you to use much smaller butterfly needles. Uh, you're taking a syringe and very quickly, within 30 seconds, you've got that in there. Some cats are time dependent. It, 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 it makes success. I like that method uh, a lot. Used it for over a decade, love it. Um, it's actually my go-to. It's, it's, I don't rarely do bag fluids. I, I mostly do that. Um, what, can you reuse the syring syringes? If you have good aseptic technique, and what that means is you are attentive to the ends of the tubing, the ends of the syringes. Typically, if you're capping them off the right way, then yes, you can. In the same way on a bag of fluids, you can reuse that line, uh, that extension line, in the same way that that can stay clean and sterile a syringe method can stay, uh, can stay clean and sterile as well for a certain amount of time. Typically, when a new bag of fluids comes in, new syringes, new lines, you're replacing everything at that point, but you can reuse them up to a certain point. So to summarize, 80% of your success with subcutaneous fluids will come by everything you do before that needle touches their body, okay? 20% um, happens, all the other stuff, warming fluids, all that stuff happens afterwards. So that 20%, 80% is everything you do before that, right? Um, um, next thing is, do you have to give subcutaneous fluids? Is it the only way for your cat? Um, big thing with treating cats is creativity. We always have to have, we always have to think, my cat does this, what are the creative options I can bring into their life so my relationship with my cat is preserved? Final aspect uh, for the syringe method, can you reuse syringes? Yep, you can do it. Um, yep, you can do it in the same way you would reuse a syringe line. You just, you're not touching the tips of the ports. Watch my subcutaneous uh, fluid video. I show kind of where not to touch on those areas. If you don't touch those areas, typically I'm reusing those lines. I throw them out when a new bag is there. Um, this would be weird, but if you've got an autoclave at home, then you can autoclave them and reuse them that way. Probably not recommended, but there it is. So thank you for your question. Good luck. Uh, that's fantastic that you're trying to help your cat and uh, maybe we'll see you in stress of success. Try your best, okay? Thank you.